Welcome to Working Class Music. We are doing our first interview and it's with Michael Bond. Oh, second. Sorry, that was Nick. It was like, fuck, why did you respond now? But, um, you go. but, um, well, um, another thing, which is funny because this is not lighthearted. Like, I was like, <laughs> I know, uh, I know you've been through a lot over this last year, and some of it I'm not going to get into because that's yeah. that's just personal. Okay. And, you know, I've, I've seen you depressed at that from where you were from those low points to now. And, like, one of the things that you know that I'm, I'm a big advocate for is mental health. So how did you deal with that depression from then to where you are now? It's been a oh my god! It's been a it's been a roller coaster. Oh, man. I, I know, I, it's been I a know. Roller coaster. It's been so weird, man. The last three years or so have yeah, was... been just like um, you get like a little high, and then it's just like gone, and yeah. then um, and that's just kind of what's been happening to me. Like I'll have some like good things happen, and then I'm like I'm like give it another couple of weeks, some shit's gonna go down, you know? Like, <laughs> like you know, like, like like I'm too happy right now, <laughs> like like that's not good. Like just with things like like obviously. You know, the, I won't go into details, but like, you know, the issues thing happened that mm. like, dude, that was, that was very, very life changing. And, mm. and it, it was just weird. And, and, and I, I, man, that was, a, it was also a reality check too. Mm. So, um, that was very weird. It, it took, it took me a while to get past that. So right after the issues thing, within the year of me parting ways with issues and everything, like a few months after two of my friends from high school took their lives that was in like the first like six months then after right after that my grandmother passed and so it's just been like kind of like one thing after another of just like all right all right we got some we're, we're kind of on a roll now all of a sudden it's just like gone and like so it's just been a whole three years of that just like taking hits so it was like i lost my band two friends took their lives and then my grandmother passed within a year and i was just like yeah yeah like how am i supposed to deal with this like yeah. so so and a lot of people don't know that you know like mm -hmm. a lot of people are probably like damn like why are you so sad like why are you so sad i'm like well i mean i lost my job like <laughs> i lost my career man like i put like six seven years into this you know lost my career like in in with a snap of a finger you know i had no idea and then two of my friends from high school right back to back like killed themselves and 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 then a few months later my grandmother dies and and so it's just like it's just like damn i can't take this like i can't take this like it's just one thing after another and you just start to wonder you're like like is something good gonna happen like because i'm just taking shots for like right back to back and so it was that first year i was just like this is a nightmare i was like what is happening with my life and i just got into this just such a dark place and then you know i kind of like got out of it uh the wild heart thing happened and i was like okay i'm playing music again and i was i went to drums and, and started playing drums and everything we did the wild heart thing that fell apart and that sent me back spiraling into like a dark place again it just kind of got worse and worse like every time something bad would happen i would just get darker and darker and you know i, I won't go into it because it is fairly personal but you know i was in a relationship for four years and part of the reason that we split up um was because of my depression and i just could not get my head on straight i couldn't come out of such a dark place and uh i don't i don't fault you know her for leaving but like you know i made stupid decisions and and i just was in such a terrible place i just could not for the life of me like bring myself out of you know depression and in and, and, and such a dark place and um not to get like deep or anything but like you know like, like that's that's what it was man like and and it sucks is like i still beat myself up about it but you know like i'm definitely happier now but um you know it sucks that like i couldn't like make myself happy and and fix it it sucks but it was for the best you know it needed to happen uh, i i wasn't gonna like pull myself out unless something drastic happened and and it did and it took that for me to like be like yeah i can either like go down the same road and like like continue like just being like this dark cloud around people around me and just being depressed and crying about it or or i can take my head on my ass and actually like do something because there's only two options mm -hmm. i'm either gonna get so overwhelmed and so depressed that i'm just gonna take my life or i can actually like do something with my life yeah. you know those, those are the only two options you got man <laughs> And I did not want to, I knew I didn't want to take my life because I wanted that chance of knowing, could something happen on down the road? 
is it going to just that that whole thought of like will it get better is it going to get better what if I, if if i take my life like like i'll never know but you get so in such a dark place sorry to get so dark but oh, like, like, there was one day where i was literally i went from issues and i started and i was and my buddy kevin got me the job you know it was my mm-hmm. first job from issues like you know i took like a year off basically and then i was like i need to get a job like i can't just like live off of past money you know so there was one day that i was i was i was working at this liquor store with kevin and uh he got me a job and i had no really experience working he got me a job and i was just like okay i'll try it out and see what it is and like maybe i can find something better later and i just remember going in one day and i was just like man i went from playing for thousands of people and now i'm slinging liquor to people at like nine in the morning and i remember i was like i think this is my last day on earth like and i really i know that sounds crazy like and it's dark but i was like i'm just gonna stick it out today and i'm uh, you know like like i'm gonna go home and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna end it like i can't do this and so that the fact that like that you get to that place you just don't care the the whole like thought of like oh what if something good happens on down the road or what if i get another shot down the road that goes out the window you're just like i just want this sadness to go that's that's where i was i remember literally going into work one day and going like after my shit i'll just finish this shift out and that'll be it like i'll be done like i'm done with life like i'm gonna go home i'm gonna go home and do it with that said i was there when all of that was going on and i think it's crucial to say it's very important to make sure you have good friends around you yes because um because we were all worried about you we were all like you know we gotta we gotta you know make sure mike is okay yeah and and it's weird because i dude i wasn't okay I called uh, you and and Garrett, and I'll never forget the phone call with Garrett. Like, because I've I've never gotten like that hysterical. It's weird. Like, like um, he he was like, "Hey man, how you doing?" Because I think he knew like like you know it was it was going down. Mm-hmm. And um, he's like, "Hey man, how you doing?" I wasn't really talking much. He's like, "Mike, you okay?" And I was just like, "I'm not okay." Like like like, and I was just and he's like, "All right, I'm on my way." And then um and and it was I was like hysterical, man. I was just like you know like what the fuck am i gonna do like like just lost my shit like and then um and then he came over and then you ended up coming over and and if i didn't have y'all there that night like i would have just lost it bro like like that would that could have been the end of it. it that's another thing it was like like i also had to get my head on straight and like say like stop feeling sorry for myself but at the same time i had to surround myself with people that are going to lift me up and that are going to understand what i'm going through it was cool to have you and garrett there and and y'all don't exactly live close you know so no, like, like, so it, it was it was cool to have that you got to have good friends you got to have friends that that are aware of of mental health you got to have the friends that aren't going to go oh man i'm sorry you're going through a hard time that sucks yeah you don't need that like because yeah. that does nothing like you got to have the friends that are actually going to hear you out and like be there for you like like <sighs> this just frustrates me because like like i've seen it happen before you know people will actually like get to that point they'll take their lives and then you have the other people that go show up and go damn like, like i just talked to him the other day i told him i told him i hope they feel better and i'm like really mm. really yeah. and you're just wondering why they were still depressed like 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 that's what you did like you told him like oh, i texted him the other day i was like damn that sucks Thanks. i'm yeah. like yeah it fucking <laughs> does it fucking does suck like that doesn't help like and then yeah. you wonder like why they took their well, life and it's and like see, uh, that's the thing like because um you can't surround yourself with people like that like no, you gotta I, actually have a support no, team and, and you guys and you're absolutely right because the thing is to kind of liken that situation especially with mental health it's if you don't have the right support system, it just feels very superficial because yeah. then like, you know, with social media and everything, it's easy for someone to write a message and have that be their excuse. But it's harder for people to actually be there because the thing that's about social media, it's made it easy for people to be there without being there. Yeah. You know, from your experience and like being there and watching that, like I can tell you, you're like, you are so loved, dude. Like we all were just like yo, we got to be there for Michael. Like, we got to make sure he's okay. Dude, it, it really meant a lot, man. It really meant a lot. Like, like and, and it took that to, like, like keep my head on straight. And like, like, it took, like, every day. Like, like, because, I, I mean, I still have my days. You know, mm-hmm. I still have my days. But, like, it's nowhere near, like, sorry, I had to twitch it out. No, you're fine. Um, uh, um, it's nowhere near, like, like what it was what it was you know like, like everybody's gonna have their days you know like, i still struggle but like like it took a consistent like 
group of friends to actually like have a daily thing. And it was cool because y'all weren't just there for me like one day. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was a consistent thing, you know, like, like checking in and everything. And like, uh, and it took that to like keep me on the right path and keep me straight. It's crazy to even think that like you have those thoughts. No, it's... like like because I'm in such a better place now. You and, you, um, you are seeing you go from super low. Sorry to cut you off. Oh no, seeing, you're, you're seeing good. Seeing you to go from super low to where you are now. It's just it's been inspiring. See, it's it literally, it literally took me like like me going through that breakup to go, man. Maybe I'm the like burden. Ultimately, she left because of me. And it, I don't know what it was, but I told myself, I was like, I'm not going to cry about it anymore. I'm not going to be like, like, oh, you know, have a fucking Michael pity party. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go and I'm going to actually like do something, you know? And by that time, like the villa had like had a couple songs out, we went into the studio and we recorded three, six songs. And I was like stoked. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to run with this and I'm going to fucking do it to my, the, my best ability every single day. And I was, I was like, I, I'm not going to die. I was like, I'm not ready to die. I'm not ready to, to take my life. Like, I don't want to do that. You know, not to be corny, what advice would you give to a musician or anyone, really, that's in that dark place? Like, what would you say to them to encourage them? You make the best of your life. Like, go do it. I know everybody says it and it's so cliche, but like, dude, the sky is the absolute limit, man. Like, like yeah. the sky is the absolute limit. So like, it's just so weird how once I turned over that mindset, 2021, Shit just started going. No, yeah, it just started taking off, and I just told myself I was like, "Sorry to repeat it, but like, like you know what? Yeah. I'm not ready to die. I want to know, like, like I, I want one more shot. I want one more shot to see if I can actually like make something myself and do this. And uh, and so so I did. And and as soon as 2021 happened, shit just started happening. Like it's just it just started going. And you know, further going from that, like, look what's happened afterwards. You guys got picked up by a new label. You guys have a bunch of things in the work and you know to me you know i've always said you know your mentality is your reality yeah. and you switched your mentality and put in the work and then now you know look where you guys are like you guys have a bunch of things happening and you know i i hate to be that guy that's like oh yeah you know ben says a bunch of things happening because you see that thrown around so often but being a friend and watching from the background i'm like damn like Shit, it, like, it, shit's it, changed. It was, it was weird, man. It, and it's weird because it's happened only within, like, a few months. Yeah. Like, obviously, I had to put in work, but, like, it was, like, my my mentality changed and my head changed, and all of a sudden, shit just started to happen. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's it was it's cool, man. Like, but going from that, like, tell us about some of the things that the villa has in the works. So we did these three songs uh, with Kyle Odell. We did them. We came out of the studio feeling really good. And uh, I was like, damn, these songs are really cool. I was like, this is kind of where... I want to take this band. This is the direction I want to go. And I was like, I think it's time to like, kind of like start like pitching these songs and seeing if like any managers want to like work with us and, and, and stuff. I had up my buddy Joe Bushema and uh, he used to work with our current manager now, Matty. Um, and I was like, hey man, uh, I'm going to send you a couple songs if that's okay. And I was like, if you know any managers that are interested, like please let me know or if you can send me in the right direction. And uh, he's like, dude, I got you. And so he put me in touch with Maddie, or he sent the songs to Maddie, and Maddie loved them. And, and he was like stoked. And I was like, sick. And um, so from there on out, like me and Maddie kept talking and everything. Like we would keep in touch and everything. And eventually he was like, yo, I want to work with you guys. Like I think I think this could be cool. And I was like, sick. I was like, awesome. And um, so we we got. Uh, linked up with them, Maddie and everything. And then, you know, a month or two goes by. We're kind of just like sitting and waiting. Like we're, we're in the meantime, we're getting mixes back and everything and like, like finalizing these three songs that we did with Kyle. And all of a sudden, um, I pull up to Publix one day because I want that pub sub. Yeah, that pub sub. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, uh, <laughs> Maddie calls me and he's like, Hey, man, got some good news. Can you talk for a second? And I was like, Yeah. And I was, I thought he, was, I didn't know what he was going to say or, or whatever. Like, and he goes, Hey, uh, I think, I think Shapiro wants to wants to work with you guys, and I was like, "Dude, yes!" <laughs> and I was like, "That's sick!" And so from there on out, like we just kind of just kind of like kept rolling and everything, and like um we started having conversations and everything, and it was I thought it was gonna take a while, uh, you know, to like like get everything get done or like even like see an offer, and it was like it was by, it was like within a week and everything, and I was like. Oh shit! Like, Dude, like this is moving fast. I was like, I was like, oh my god! Like it's crazy because like being there from the outside perspective, I remember talking to you and talking to Turner, and then like, and you guys were like, oh yeah, this is happening, and then it was like next week it was like, it's happening now. I'm like. Next Dude. week, an announcement. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it was with it was like bam, bam, bam. Like, 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 like. Oh, hey, we may see an offer. 
And I was like, that's cool. And I, was, I wasn't I was even going to get my hopes up. And I was like, but that's sick, like, that, that we might get an offer. I was like, that, that's really cool. We always had a great relationship with Dave. Um, I always like working with Dave. Super nice guy. He's, I mean, he's literally, like, he does everything. And, like, like that guy busts his ass. And um, so, you know, like, it was cool that he would even be, like, interested. And I was like, you know, like, maybe we'll see an offer, like, by the end of the month or something. Like, it might take a little bit. I, he's busy, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 two or three days pass. And, uh, we, you know, we ended up getting an offer. And then and then they announced, like, their roster. And then they're like, we want you to be uh, a part of the announcement and everything. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, this is quick. Like, like, <laughs> like And it was, like, within, like, two or three weeks. It was, like, done. And I was just like, damn, this is crazy. Like, uh, just the quick aside, for those that don't know, uh, the reason why this is awesome because the music industry works super slow. Yes. So, yeah. like, by the time you, so, like, see an announcement, that's probably, like, what, six months? Oh, yeah, yeah. By the time, like, you see something, the band's known about it for months. Like, yeah. or, like, they, it's been on it's been on lockdown for months, you yeah. know? So, like, like, or by the time you see a tour, like, we've known about that tour for months. And the music industry just takes forever to do anything. And, um, you know, they just work at their own pace, you yeah. know, just like. So, you might hear about something, and then it's not finalized for like months down the road and you're just like finally got yeah. but like to, so to see to hear about like hey you might be getting an offer like like which we were stoked but i was like like i said i wasn't gonna get my hopes up and then within that week like you get the offer it's just like damn that's sick that's really cool and it was cool because because dave uh they even got on the phone with us and, and talked to us and everything and it was it was really cool like he was he was very interested and it was nice to hear from him too mm-hmm. and then so we went ahead and booked uh three more songs to do with with uh kyle and uh we're gonna uh finish out an ep and everything hopefully i mean there's obviously no date because we haven't mm-hmm. even finished it yet but like well, i'm not i'm not holding on to yeah something that y'all don't know (laughs) but um but um but yeah so like we would like to uh we would like to maybe shoot for like late summer for a release for like an actual ep um obviously we'll probably drop a couple singles before that but yeah i'm really really excited and it's cool another thing was was it was kind of it's kind of crazy to even get an offer in the middle of like a pandemic a pandemic like like you just don't it's just weird to even see that like 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 i'm like very very grateful and, and lucky and thankful like um to to even like see an offer like during all this shit going on like bands aren't even touring and for yeah. somebody to like take a chance on us is is really cool and and um it's we're very appreciative of uh maddie and ricky and dave and everybody so and i guess now uh the question that uh nelson has been waiting on the question he's gonna pose Basically. you're getting up like an old man yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's like oh, oh let me get off my chair <laughs> So what's your favorite from the original Star Wars trilogy? Oh, God. Maybe, uh... We can just go ahead and put Empire at the top, but, yeah. <laughs> you like Empire Strikes Back? I, I love Empire. I would say... Gosh. Return of the Jedi? Maybe. That was a... You know what? I have a special place for Return of the Jedi, because that was I the first Star Wars movie I saw with my dad. So, out of the Star Wars prequels, which one would you say is your favorite? To the prequel, yeah, I would, I would say I'd have to say Phantom Menace. That's a dicey choice. Just, but just because I know Jar Jar Binks is like, yeah, it's only because I thought Darth Maul was so fucking sick. He and was, it, and it, and it sucks because like going back, he's only in that movie for what like he's got like less than like, ten minutes. I think of, like, like a total of seven minutes. Yeah, like of, like actual us. like movie time. Yeah. Y- you want more, obviously. <laughs> But like I just remember seeing him and I was just like I, as a kid like I was just like man that's so sick yeah like so I, I, would, I would dual. have to say yeah I would have to say the Phantom Menace but at the same time I, w- I would it would have been cool to see a little bit more of him because yeah. the time he gets in that movie is just kind of sad and <laughs> like, now Nelson's part the Disney Disney stuff now when we when we say Disney are we just including the main three or yeah just the three but, uh, no Rogue One or Solo. I would say probably Force Awakens. Yep. Because, dude, The Last Jedi. My <laughs> God. Really? Okay. My God. All right, so which we've one? had we've had yeah, talks we've about had this guy. I almost stood up. I almost stood up and walked out. I was actually like mad watching it. <laughs> I got I, I do me and my buddy Shelby. He's he's a mm. he's a hardcore Star Wars guy. And 15 minutes in, yeah. we look over and we're like. This is starting off kind of weird. He's like, he's like, yeah. He's like, I don't know what's going on. He's like, this is kind of starting off weird. And I was like, yeah. I was like, I don't know. Thirty minutes in, we looked at each other again, and we're like, bro, what is going on here? Like, like, I don't like this. I do not like this, dude. Like an hour in, 
we both were like, fuck this shit. Like, like, and he, dude, he literally, he, he was literally like shouting shit. He was like, that would never happen. That would never happen. Like, like, so like, like it was, it was so, and we were with our girlfriends at the time and, and you could just tell she, they were both just like, I don't want to be here. I do not want to be here right now. You have these, like our boyfriends are shouting at the movie screen. Like, yeah. like, like, but like we almost stood up and like actually walked out. I was so frustrated. The part that also gets two, two things in that movie that get me the princess Leia scene, obviously, <laughs> yeah, like all, no, all of a sudden, all of a yeah. sudden she can breathe in space and float back to her space. She gets, yeah. she gets blown up yeah. in a spaceship and goes, <laughs> Superman's it. What are Superman's it back to the ship? Can, can we impose a clip of that? But with like with Superman at home. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You. That scene, and then the other scene. It's a it's a minor minor thing, but like when Luke Skywalker does the dirt off his shoulders, I was like, <laughs> I was like, that's atrocious, man. I was like, that's so atrocious. I can't imagine being Mark Hamill and being told, all right, so you're gonna get lit the fuck up. You're gonna get shot one billion times, and then you're gonna brush it off. Like, like, <laughs> like obviously he was not really there, but like, still, like, I can't imagine being Mark Hamill and being told to like, all right, now you got to brush the dirt off your shoulders. After that. Like, Actually, the kind of the add to the Star Wars thing, as far as the Princess Leia thing, because well, on my flight back, I had to watch uh, the Rise of Skywalker. I didn't realize like, not only did they do a disservice to Finn, but they also, while trying to hype up Princess Leia did a disservice to her in the context of all three trilogies. Cause it's, it's, it's like, she chose to die right then. Like, yeah, this is like, all right, I'm going to die. I'm this most, I'm this powerful being in the force. Oh wait, Kylo and uh, Ray are fighting. Let me distract him by dying. <laughs> so what was worse? Rise of Skywalker or the last Jedi? I think last Jedi, but like, really but, but the rise, see the rise of Skywalker. Uh, I just feel like J.J. Abrams like had to pick up the pieces. <laughs> yes, I, I just feel like, I, dude, I just feel like J.J. Yeah. Abrams so like he's like he's like, well, what the fuck do I do now? Like, <laughs> like I feel like he just had it was just like him just picking up the pieces of just what. On it? Honestly, you like know? to kind of add to that, like after rewatching the Rise of Skywalker, I felt like he was picking up the pieces, but he didn't give a fuck. Snoke was supposed to be the big bad, but now he's gone, so I guess we had to bring back <laughs> Palpatine. But, but like the thing that kind of shits on the whole movie as far as the rise of Skywalker is like Palpatine came back from the dead so now you killed him again what's stopping him from coming back like, <laughs> yeah. like is he gonna come back yeah it's like I watched the end of that movie it's like that part makes no sense because like if you kill him he's gonna possess you yeah. that was his whole premise of getting you to goad you into killing him I will say the fight dude the fight scene when they're on the actual like Death Star mm -hmm. I thought that was sick like like when the, and it was cool it was it was kind of cool like the imagery going back and seeing them go through the death star thought that was kind of cool but yes the uh, the movie is has many flaws but on a brighter note how about the mandalorian so sick yeah real quick can we just talk about that last final scene oh Dude, yeah there's so many there's so many intimate moments oh, okay. Just so many intimate moments, dude. When he takes his helmet off, just the fact that, like, obviously he's made Mandalorian, he doesn't take his helmet off always, and he lets him. Just that, it's so, it's just so small, but like such a big thing. Hon like, like honestly, during that whole season finale, because I was just like, we all knew someone was coming. It was like, oh, yeah, it's dude, a yeah, Jedi. When, and it's like when hey, I saw know. the green saber, I was like, I was like, are you serious? <laughs> See, I, I, was, I stood up. I, I thought they up. were going to. I honestly thought they were going to bamboozle us because there was another. Je I thought it was. I thought they were going to like cast somebody as um. I thought. I thought that was going to be Ezra, uh, and I was like, oh, okay. But when it turned out to be Luke, I was like, this is like, all the fans wanted. I was like, this is the Luke Skywalker I want, and the fact that you know everything after Rogue One is like mirrored that hallway scene, that Vader hallway scene. Yeah. I think this one was more effective because it's Luke. That Vader hallway scene. So cool. Yeah. In incredible the movie's definitely a little slow but the way it's shot the cin cinematography is beautiful yeah of rogue one it's absolutely gorgeous like the whole movie like i was just like this is cool this is cool it's 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 beautifully shot and everything and then all of a sudden that last scene happened and i was just like let's go yeah. or like <laughs> credits like, dude they literally they didn't care <laughs> but all right well thank you michael um, yeah i course. appreciate you doing this and as of the filming of this video, we're still doing the giveaway for the HomePod Mini. All you have to do is like, subscribe, and comment. 
you know, just tell us about your own mental health struggles and how you deal with it. Obviously stay positive and encouraging in the comment section because, you know, we as musicians do deal with that. And again, all you have to do is like, subscribe, comment. And once we reach a thousand subscribers, we're, we'll give this thing away. Again, thank you to Michael for thank you joining for us. Me. Dude, this is thank, awesome. Yeah, this is awesome. Do you think of a catchphrase yet? Uh, do you bleed? <laughs> uh, all right same time same channel <laughs> and thanks again we'll see you soon all right the serious question now popeyes or chick-fil-a oh bro come on now